share for half an hour. Then we'll ask you to preach that day. So uh, let your testimonies be very brief what God has done in your life because that would encourage somebody else. Amen? And we can put the devil to shame by giving these testimonies. And I think we'll have two testimonies every week. So quickly come. Uh, Tina will just tell when is it the right time. And uh, she wants to see all the testimonies herself, is it? No. Praise God. Pastor Arun and Shibar in South Africa, they read safely. Uh, Sam's, Pastor Samson and Rani are in India. I don't know where, Madras. They are in Madras. Keep, continue to keep them in prayer, uh, that God will use them, whatever they are, and bring them back safely. There's also another prayer request that I have for you all. Is, uh, uh, this place is only up till February for us. That's what they wrote it. But we don't believe that. God has the last word on it. So let's pray that God will give us the extension on this place. Amen? Praise God. Now, are we ready for the word? Amen? How many of you prayed and came to use Pastor Dennis? Let me see that. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Let's look unto the Lord and uh, surrender this time to Him. Father, we come to this time of your word into your hands. Father, we pray that you would speak to each one of us today that our lives will be changed for you. Lord, we don't want to go back the way we came in. We want to go be changed. We want to go back for you, Father God. Lord, you speak to us tonight. Thank you for your promise that your words will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it is being sent. And tonight, Father, I surrender myself into your hands, and I pray you will use me as your extension, as your mouthpiece, Father. I humble myself. And let your name be exalted and glorified this evening, Father. Speak to us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. How many of you remember the promise for the year? Can I hear it loud? Amen. What is your scripture? Amen. At this rate, you'll be reaping a lot of harvest. Amen. Praise God. And we have heard about... Uh, we have to sow to reap. Amen? That's a kingdom principle is you need to sow to reap. And uh, there was a direction also for the year. How many of you remember that? Draw near. Amen. Praise God. There is a harvest that I'm going to talk to you about, but I'm going to talk to you more about the direction today. Because God wants us to be in a place. He has called us to be in a particular place. And uh, we're going to talk about that a little more today. But before that, let me just tell you a story so that you would understand this. Uh, maybe you've heard this before from me. There was a small boy and his mother who went to a shop. I'm not talking of the big supermarkets, but the small shops. So the mother was buying things and she was well known to the shopkeeper. So the shopkeeper came to the boy and uh, gave him a bottle of toffee. He removed the lid. And he gave it to the boy and said, come on, take some sweets. He says, no, I don't want. Then his mother said, no, son, please take something. He's showing to you out of love, take something. He says, no, I don't want. And then uh, mother tried to insist to take something, and he said, no, I don't want. Then the shopkeeper finally said, okay, I will give it to you. Immediately, the boy opened his T-shirt and held it like this for the shopkeeper. And the shopkeeper took the bottle and put it into his hand. Mom was very upset. She said, what a boy you are. He asked you three, four times. And you said, I don't want, I don't want. And then when he st starts to give you, showing your, uh, what do you call your t-shirt, to get everything that you want. Why did you do that? He said, mom, if I would have taken, I would have taken one or two sweets. And that's all I would have. But when he was giving, he was giving me in abundance. Amen? That's the God we serve. Amen? In Hindi, they say, Jab uparwala deta hai, fat ke deta hai. Amen? When God gives, He gives in abundance. We talked about harvest, a time of sowing and reaping. But God is also speaking to us about a harvest that you didn't sow. Amen? A house that you didn't build. A job that you didn't work for. And God is giving it to you. Amen? A harvest which God Himself planted for you and me. Amen? This year, you are going to receive a harvest or you're going to step in and reap something 
which you are never sowed into. Amen. That's our God. And he has promised us that this year would be a year of harvest. And he is going to give you something that you're never even sowed into at all. He has done it for us. And we're just going to get in there and reap that. I just want to uh, just tell you a small uh, sort of testimony. Beginning of the year when we started in our company, in my company, uh, we had a lot of small jobs. And there was a tender we tendered last year with ADCO. It was a direct tender. And we had put such a high price because it's in the desert. And we said, if we get it fine, otherwise it's okay. That was what uh, my company guy said. And we submitted it. We prayed over it. This was sometime in uh, June last year. And in the beginning of this year, I got a paper asking to collect some documents from ADCO. And uh, I said, oh, no, this tender I have to redo again. Then I started sitting and reading it. It was a contract that has been awarded to us. And I knew that minute I saw that, it is nothing of us doing, it is God's doing. Amen? Because a company like Adco normally looks at who's the lowest. And I went and told my owner, who's a Muslim, and he's also, we pray together. And Gilbert also knows him pretty well. And was, uh, he was very instrumental. Gilbert was all very instrumental in him coming to the Lord, although he hasn't grown anyway. And uh, he said, this is the grace of God. Amen. And we've been awarded 148 kilometers of pipeline in the desert to maintain, which a lot of other companies this, but we got it. This is the harvest that God has given. Amen. We didn't work for it. It was all purely God's. And God's bringing that into each one of our lives too. Amen. Praise God. How many of you go for a walk? How many of you go alone for a walk? You go alone. Today, I'm going to talk to you about walking with God. Amen? Walking with God, because the direction that God has for us is, what is it? Let's hear together. Draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. James chapter 4, words 8. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5, words 21. Genesis chapter 5. Rebecca, you can put that up there. Genesis chapter 5, words 21. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch was 365 years. And so Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Enoch walked with God. Many of us said we go alone for walking. I don't think you go alone. You have the Holy Spirit with you. Amen? Praise God. This man Enoch, he was the seventh generation after Adam. Amen? And he, the Bible says, walked with God. Now you need to understand that Enoch was not a New Testament believer. You and me, we have the Holy Spirit with us. Holy Spirit has got a residence. It's a permanent residence we saw in us or with us. And He is with us. If I would, you all came in your car, you would always say you and your family members. But don't forget, there was somebody whom we neglected. And today the Holy Spirit is the most neglected person in the church. Amen? So Enoch was a man in the Old Testament times. And he never had the Holy Spirit to lead him and guide him. But the Word of God says... That Enoch walked with God. How many of us really want to walk with God? Are you afraid that after some time of walking with God, God just takes you off? Amen? You know what happened with Enoch? God just loved his companionship. God loved walking with him. That after 365 years, he said, Enoch, I cannot stand without you. And I'm taking you to be where I am. Amen? There was another guy who walked with God much before Enoch. His name was Adam. That's right. But he had to live that garden and he knows what it was. I mean, it's not there in the Bible, but Adam was a great, 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 great grandfather of Enoch. But you could ask him, how can he stand for uh, seventh generation? How many years did Adam live? Nine hundred and... 900 and some years, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
So at 365 years, at 65, he started walking with God. Amen? And when Moses wrote in Genesis, he didn't write about how big or how big a prophet Enoch was. If you read the rest of the Bible, there are so many places where Enoch is talked about. He is the one who prophetically announced the coming of the Lord with his uh, people back to earth. There are so many prophecies that Enoch has given. But Moses did not write anything about his prophetic ministry. Moses wrote only one thing. 